This is the quarterfinals of the Temple Anomaly Season 1 tournament. We are now playing against Google Frog and Torben, and just review what we've gone through now. We have had a rather exciting couple games so far. Heavy versus Elliot N, which is rather well, one sided, I suppose, but we got still 2 0 for Haiku, well done. And Numbers versus Alfie, which took a lot longer than I should have, but it was still a, at least a couple of exciting games. So 2 1, congratulations, Numbers. Both Haiku and Numbers will be against each other in the semifinals coming next Saturday. And today we have, or right now, we have Google Frog versus Torben. This a couple of really good players, so I want to see how they play out. It'll be very interesting. And I've already actually this, so it will be, I mean, I'll be honest, but it was still a pretty good game, so a couple pretty good games, so we'd be very excited. So let's start up with the first game right now. So here we have, on Imperium, we have Google Frog in the first player slot playing CISO, and we have Torben playing Grekim in the top right corner. So Google Frog is a very skilled player, he actually did very well in the original alpha tournament for this game. He actually managed to win the entire tournament. He, I wasn't there, unfortunately. This is a bit before my time. But still, very very well done in that time. And that is just the first... Basically, the first time he really showed his own skill. Torben, on the other hand, is a bit of a newer player, but not by much. He's still a bit of an old-timer. He's very skilled as well. I've seen him play a lot, and I'm expecting to see some very good play out of him right now. So, that will be an exciting match to see when it comes up. So, right now we have Torben going for a rather economic build, setting up his Octos, and it looks like Google Frog setting up a Marina and a Sop to the center of the map. I'm not sure he was going to do with that. He just going for an attack. Normally, you'd only send a Special Ops to do that. But he seems to be sending Marine and Sop, getting an importer's main base with Marine as well, and an Armory. He might be getting... I'm not sure what he's doing... There, though. That's rather interesting, like I said. And Torben is focused more on getting economy, going to the top left corner of the map to get economy there, too. Expanding to where he can, and that will be a rather risky build, setting, seeing as Google Frog is already going for an attack. There's nothing coming out from Torben yet. Torben has not sent anything to harass yet, which is a little unusual for Grekim, though, like I said, there have been a lot of changes recently. So... It may be that he's trying to work that out and just play it a bit safe. And so these guys have gone forward and I believe they actually built a factory earlier on in the middle of the map. So that factory is a bit of an echo factory, I think. It doesn't seem like he's actually ultimately building it at this point in time, but... Octos are still going to the side and there's the factory back in the center of the map. So further up, Google Frog seems to have built a factory and then kind of echoed it out because when he is focused, the factory doesn't get built. Instead, he, I think, may have a factory in his own base. So, that factory, as we saw before earlier from Google Plus point of view, is not being built. And Torben continuing to build a lot of Octos, a lot of RPs around the entire map, really focusing, possibly overextending himself. And now he's jumped back to the present, jumped back a couple minutes. And Google Frog, on the other hand, still has the factory in the center of the map right now. Back, though, when he was focused, he actually hasn't built a factory in the center of the map. Built the factory in the main section, his main map, so that will be a rather odd choice of strategy. I don't know if he's trying to fool Torben into thinking a proxy factory is coming, but ultimately the factory is going to be the main base. There's two factories and an army's main base. The Marine and Sop coming into the main base, dealing very little damage, getting completely torn to shreds by the Octos. The Octos are continuing to build up RPs, actually the RPs we already saw, in the Northwest expansion. So, that will be a rather risky expansion. And ATC is coming into the main base, and that will be hard to deal with because right now, Torben does not have any Faros except for his Progen Triad Faro. And ATC is going to his main base. It might actually. I'm not sure if he's going to switch around if Google Frog realizes that there's an expansion in the top left. The Marine and Sob have been aborted in the main attack, have been sent to the east base, center east base, and the ATC has actually changed his path. It's going to the north base instead of the east, or the northeast base, or the main base. It's going to the northwest expansion instead. 
going due north from its own position, I should say. And we'll be seeing the Octos right there, so that we'll be able to deal quite a bit of damage once it finds them. Octos coming in in streams, just coming in more from Torben's base. And the ATC is about to arrive, cloaked, completely undefended, and will be able to destroy that base handily. Another ATC coming up from Google Frog, likely to also attack the north base. And more infantry coming in from Google Frog. Well, this is earlier, it's about a minute down from when we were looking. We see that there is a Marine from Luxembourg coming in, which should also be probably building some RPs. I guess it's going to go north from expansion, get in the northwest expansions, build some RPs there probably. And the east side also building, well, also setting up the Marine and stuff, not building anything yet, but setting up to build. And a Macrofab has been built rather early as well. So, Macrofab coming up very early for Google Frog, ATHC dealing some damage, another ATHC going to the main base. And the Marine Sop are being attacked by an Octo that's just walking straight through to build an RP. So Torben's very focused on just building those RPs around the map. And an ATC coming in to Google Frog's, sorry, from Google Frog to Torben's base will be able to scout around, figure out what's going on, and harass a bit as well. While the ATC in the northwest base is dealing a lot of damage, another ATC in the center of the map, or west center of the map, is taking a lot of damage. It's been destroyed. It didn't cloak in time, but Google Frog may have cloaked that back when he is. He is about half a minute down. Corbin, however, doing a lot of damage to his Octos from his point of view, and has managed to deal a lot. From Google Frog's point of view, the Octos are still able to deal some damage. Or coming back in, we'll be dealing some damage very soon. The ADC is coming to try to deal with them. It's probably not cloaked yet. It should be cloaking very soon. Or should hopefully cloak very soon for Google Frog's sake. But it looks like Google Frog has actually lost that. He's going to be going back again to try to deal with this a bit better. I'm not sure if he's as focused on his base as I am, but he is dealing a lot of damage to the northwest base. Looks like he is fixing to take that for himself. And another ATC coming in to help attack. So there's two ATCs in the main base right now of Torbins. Google Frog further in the past has an ATC coming up, another ATC coming up to the northwest expansion from the looks of it, or not even another one, just the first one. And more ATCs coming to the center, just bypassing the Octo. So he knows the Octos are coming, but doesn't seem to set up defense. He has very little CE left, too. So, that's going to be a bit of a problem for him. He has the Octos. The Octos are being heavily attacked by the ATC. One of them has been destroyed, and the other ATCs are progressing straight to the base. No, they're coming around. They're actually going down to defend, so Google Frog will be able to ultimately defend against this attack from Torbin. Very effective attack, though. Did can cause the Macrofab to be cancelled, but... Google Frog will likely be rebuilding that as soon as he can. Spec Ops in the northwest base, dealing with the expansion instead of ATHCs. And the ATHCs back here, Google Frog back when he is, probably dealing more damage. Torben, from his point of view, thinks that he's able to deal a ton of damage to Google Frog, but Google and build a lot of Faros. Holy crap, there's a lot of Faros. Looks to be going for a pretty direct attack with the Faros. Octos as well coming into the side base, deal a lot of damage, but Google Frog, of course, knows of this coming and will be able to counter it. Has a lot of time to counter it. Two minutes down. We see that Google Frog is actually managing to get rid of the Octos, and will likely be able to get rid of the Octos on the east side as well. The northwest expansion has been destroyed, and I'm a bit surprised. Right now, ground units is being upgraded for Google Frog, but advanced structures is not being upgraded, so that's going to be rather strange. So right now, it seems like Google Frog is going to have the upper hand, destroying a lot of the expansions of Torben. Torben really expanded a lot. He could get a lot of resources out of it, though. He has a lot of resources in the bank, and Octo is still kind of harassing Google Frog's base. The ATCs will be able to deal with this, so Torben won't be able to deal that much damage ultimately. But it is surprising as a Grecom player that he hasn't even gotten a reef yet, let alone advanced structures. Just at this, it's about five minutes into the game. He's going for heavy economy, but it just seems very suspicious he's not going for a lot of tech on top of that economy to support it. Or getting a lot of units there, getting a lot of Faros, which are still good generalist units. And it seems he's also decided to go for two tries instead of one. And there was there was a change to the way that progeneration worked. Normally, progeneration, every progenerating unit has enough energy to progenerate ten units. And they changed in the last version to be seven units. And I can kind of see why he'd go for a second triad because of that, but it still seems like he's not producing a lot of units as it is in the meantime. He could have easily produced a lot of units while he was making that triad, that second triad, instead of just trying to build a second triad as his only priority. At any rate, he is getting a reef, he should be getting advanced structures very soon, and he is getting a lot of Faros, and about half a dozen Octos coming in to the south base here, joining the ATHC, because the Faro is supporting it. Another ATHC coming down from the west, but it won't be able to last very long. 
and a third ATC coming into the main base, but that's a bit further in the future. So jumping back, seeing that the officers are actually, many of them are actually going straight through that base. They aren't even, they may be attack moving or maybe regular moving, but they're going through that to the southeast base. So Torben clearly has his intention set on getting that north, south, no, they are moving. They're not even attack moving anymore. They're just straight moving. And, or at least the Faro hasn't come into detect yet, so they won't be able to hit the, the ATHCs. So that might actually be a problem. That might actually end up dragging away the ATHCs from that main base. Or, not main base, the east expansion. If the ATHCs are following the Octos through there. There's four ATHCs now. And more Octos coming in. More Faro's coming in. Oh, more Faro's coming to the west. But... That expansion has already been lost, so it's a bit late to deal with that. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't sent all the Faros down to the east side, the Middle East, and then getting rid of that factory, that ATHC set, just everything. But nope, he is getting his power though, so he will be able to get air units very quickly. And those Octos coming straight through again. And yeah, they appear to have actually dragged away the ATHCs. The ATHCs are going to the south of the map and will be distracted from that main base, so Octos will be able to attack it directly without the ATHCs stopping them. At least from Google Fox's point of view. So, Sebipod and Farbod coming in. Torben manages to get them at his own time. Google Fog has, I don't think his time has seen them yet. But that'll still deal a lot of damage once it gets in. And that's just Octos right now from Google Fog's point of view, but he will be seeing the Farbod and Sebipods coming in very quickly. Martanks coming in from Google Fog. Very effective because they will be able to deal with the Octos coming in, but the Farbod and Sebipod will be a challenge. If you can get some frigates, get machinery, get anti air units from that, he will be able to counter them effectively, but he's going to need those. If he doesn't have those, he has nothing. The ATC is coming in, however, to deal with these Octos, but only one instead of the four that he had before. Bit of a problem. Martank's also coming in. Looks like they are coming in to try to deal with this. A Lancer coming in to help with the anti-air, but I don't think it's going to be enough. against two Sephi Pods and a far Pod. Uh, the far Pod, yes, but the two Sephi Pods, probably not. So jumping back a bit further, about a minute down from when we were, we see that Torben, his Octos are being as effective as they used to be. Google Frog is not doing too much to change this around, and we see... No, sorry, it's two Far Pods and a Seti Pod. So a bit easier for a Lancer, but not by much. Two or three Lancers would have an easy time. And maybe you see in here trying to deal with some of the Far Pods. And here we have the Frigate. Actually, no, Frigate doesn't require machinery, apparently. So here we have a Frigate, and the Frigate will get to deal enough damage to Seti Pod to actually take this all out, but no detectors, unfortunately. And there's a Sop right there. It's a Sop that could easily take care of this, but no, the Spec Ops has not been sent to help detect. And no turn on has been made either because machinery hasn't been researched yet. Machinery is actively being researched, though, and Google Frog will have it within the next 10 seconds. But, and actually, right now. So he needs some turn odds, and he will need those very quickly to help detect those fire pods. Because that is a big problem for him right now. He has no detection on those fire pods. And that means Torben has free reign. And it's actually going down to these south ETHCs. We'll be able to destroy them quite quickly. And the ATC is just trying to run away as best they can, but there's not much they can do. So right now, the ATCs are being destroyed heavily. Back, Torben's actually jumped back a bit. And see, he's destroyed the factory. No Lancers have come up, sorry, no Tornados have come up yet. And like I said, the Spec Ops, I'm surprised it wasn't moved up to help damage those Fire Buds. The ATCs are still there, and they are able to attack the Sebi Pod. Get rid of that, because Sebi was not ultimately attacked. It looks like Google Frog aborted that attack originally. But he does have a big attack coming in right now from his main base. Going to the northwest base, try to destroy what was rebuilt there for Torben. And likely from there, we'll also go to the east base. It looks like Blue Frog has actually undone that. Move his ATHCs out of the way to rescue them, sending them to the northwest base, and sending his main assault force over to the central east base, and probably from there to the main base, trying to make an ultimate assault on Torben. And we'll probably be successful with that, dealing a lot of damage. But. We'll see when it actually gets there. The Far Pod and Sebi Pod are folks on the southeast base. Have swept around, though, from Torben's point of view and are attacking the main base directly. But the main force of Google Frog from Torben's point of view has attacked his northwest base. Ultimately, the ATHCs will, but likely will be the same outcome. While the main attack force will be assaulting the main base in all likelihood. Central East Base is under attack by the forces of Google Frog. Torben's Far Pods are coming in, but the defense turret will be able to deal with them handily. There's some mechs there as well to help support. Octo is trying to come in to help deal with this, but they're being destroyed before they even get a chance to make a hit on anything. So yeah, the Octo's dealing nothing. The Far Pod getting destroyed by... Maybe it wasn't back there. But getting destroyed by the defense turret, and Google Frog will be able to sweep from here up to the main base, and will likely take the game from here. So rather short game on a rather small map, but this will be a... 
rather short game one from the looks of it. Unless Torben has something up his sleeve, but he doesn't have Chrono Porting, he doesn't have a lot of units, he doesn't have a lot of resources, but he is spending his money efficiently, which, is, which I'd like to see. So, much, much tighter game this time around than the last one, and Google Frog looks to have it. So, Google Frog will be able to take care of this. A couple of Farpods are coming up to deal with the HHCs and SFP Pod, which will help deal with them, but ultimately it's not a, that big of a deal. This isn't going to save Torbin. Domes are coming up to try to help save Torbin, and that will be able to help out a bit, but the Mars are going to deal enough damage to those domes. They will be able to deal with some of the air units, but not enough to ultimately stop the Assault Force, and the Assault Force will be able to come in and tear apart Torbin. So, Torbin likely won't be able to come back from this. If he does, I'd be very amazed, but I kind of doubt it. So, Google Frog is in a very safe spot. Torbin trying to do can with his defense force. His far bone second pods on the top left are not there to help out, and they really could help out at least a little bit, but I don't know how much they'd be able to help out. This is a huge attack force. They are actually coming around to try to intercept a little bit, try to flank, but there's a lot of production capacity for Google Frog, a lot of resources for Google Frog. There really isn't any way that Torben can come back from this. He doesn't have any chrono porting or anything, any tricks like that he could use. So Torben has surrendered, and Google Frog accepted this. So that will be game one as soon as Torben actually surrenders, properly. And Torben has surrendered, so Google Frog has won game one. So that is their first game. So well done to Google Frog. So now it's on Frostbite. This is Torben's choice. So we'll see quite quickly how this works out for either player. It's a larger map. We saw it just before with our last game between Numbers and Alfie. Worked out decently well for Numbers, as I figured, and Google Frog was able to expand around a little bit, but Torben was able to expand around a lot, and this map might actually work out pretty well for him if it all comes together. So let's see how that worked out. And starting the game up, and to get this going, here we have, so Torben has picked Grekham actually in the top right corner, while Google Frog has not chosen his race yet, he's in the bottom left corner. He's chosen Vekgear, so he's changed actually, changed up from CISO to Vekgear. Rather curious, I didn't expect that to happen. So Torben's going for the standard build with Grekham, getting his standard opening triad, Arcticus towards the front, and... Given that he built a second triad last time, I'm curious if he's going to try to build a second triad this time early on. But we'll find out. However, Google Frog is building a standard economy, so both players are going for very standard builds, and nothing really out of the ordinary yet, if at all. I also don't remember this map very, this game very well, which is probably a good thing. So, the game is starting out pretty slowly. Google Frog hasn't actually even sent out his infantry to scout yet, oddly enough. I don't know if he's just confident that he's going to be able to guess where Torben is when he actually attacks, but he has not sent his Shin or Tethvir out to figure out where Torben would be, and neither has Torben. Torben has also not sent out his Shin or Teth. I mean, also hasn't sent out his Sephi or any other units, any Octos really, although typically Grekham does scout late. When it comes to scouting around the map to figure out where your opponent is, they tend to scout late because they just want to get Octos for RPs, they don't really want to care about getting a bunch of units to scout out around. Admittedly, it's not a big cost, but it is worth getting it for the information. It's not a big cost, though, because, of course, the information is something you can use further in the past from when you originally are, when you originally get the information. But Google Frog also not scouting out very much, so both players seem to be just confident they're going to be able to guess where their opponent is, or going off of the audio, you can figure out where someone is based on the sound, but it doesn't seem extremely likely that it's going to be going for that. And Google Frog has gone for his depot, rather early, about a minute and a half in. This is a pretty typical time for a fast depot. Torben building up some RPs towards the north center in the line expansion. And also the east center. So he's building up a few RPs just around the map. So like I said, he is expanding a fair bit, which is kind of what I figured he'd do, given what he did on Imperium. And so Google Frog a bit more turtly this time around. He's focused on getting his main base set up, getting his depot set up, I'm not sure when he's going to start getting vehicles, probably soon after. And then from there we'll see a rather, hopefully rather exciting match. We should see a lot of damage. Google Frog doesn't play Vekir a lot though, so I'm not sure how comfortable he is with using a lot of the various elements of it, especially some of the, the skip teleport, because that's kind of tricky to use, very micro-intensive, but it really pays off, especially against Grekham. It's really fun to use. 
I don't know if he's going to use it, though. Torben is actually sending a Seppi and looks like an Octo out to the center of the map, or the center expansion. Yeah, he set up a Seppi to progenerate, and he's setting up another unit as well to progenerate, so it looks like he is building a second trident in the center of the map. And Google Frog is getting Skip Teleport on a Zion Pulsar, which should come in handy. And Afaro has been set up to progenerate, so Torben is getting two triads this time as well. And this will be rather interesting. More more RPs in that center expansion. So Torben is pretty much taking his entire corner of the map. A few RPs here and there. More than that, possibly. This Octo is going out the center as well. No tech, though, for either one. Rather strange. I mean, it's not super strange for Vekir, but it's strange. Just double-checking that there hasn't been any Echo Scouting for the future, and it looks like no, there hasn't. So neither player really knows yet where the other is, unless they went off audio, which they probably did. And that will mean that both players are going to be well, going to be fighting pretty quickly. The Zion Pulsar, one of the Zion Pulsars has skipped teleport, the other one's still upgrading it. And as Zion Veer going up to the northeast or the southeast base, probably to set up some RPs. And the Zion Pulsar is now teleporting forward to get up to Torben's base. Torben will have to deal with this very quickly, but the Zion Pulsar is actually teleporting around. Looks like it will be checking to make sure that this expansion has been taken, and it certainly has. So that Zion Pulsar will be able to deal with the RPs that have been built so far. And more Octos building more RPs. Zion Pulsar will be able to deal with them handily as well. So Google Frog is able to take some control of this map back from Torben, but Torben really wasn't defending his control that he had. Of course, it is quite risky to get that much map, try to get that much expansion at once at the very start of the game. So Torben has switched up a strategy, going for some Octos, not building up for RPs, just straight Octos. And very quickly, Google Frog has actually gotten an aerial control center, so he'll be able to very quickly get some air units, get some probably Shinterchers, it's typically what people get. Maybe Tetris maybe suspects that Torben will go for the typical Grecum strategy of getting Farapods, Sepipods, but likely more for the Shin Turgis, typical assault units that Vector used. And Google Frog is going to be fighting some Aryans pretty soon. Torben is getting advanced structures, will be getting a Spire shortly, I'm sure. And from there, Google Frog may actually want to get some Tet Searchers. Zion Pulsar coming in as well to deal with this. RP, and that's still going to be a bit of a heated area. There's still a lot of meta time left. And the Zion Pulsar have actually found the... Yes, they found the Triad. The second Triad of Torben will be able to damage it very heavily once they get to it. So Torben's going to have a very hard time with this. He has two Triads set up. One of them is going to be very heavily damaged. It's actually building some Faros and Seppies to help defend against the Zion Pulsars that have come in. But Zion Pulsar is very heavy splash damage, able to get rid of all these units that are being built quickly, getting rid of the rest of the Triad, and... Torben's going to have to do a lot to make up for this. He does, however, advance structures. He can get Aspire, he can get Faropods, and from there he will be able to get rid of those Zion Pulsars that are attacking him right now. But that's going to be very tough to do. There isn't a lot of meta time to do it. He, Torben is running out of CE. He has three orders left worth of CE when he is. And actually, fast forwarding stuff is increasing. But he's still running out of orders to send. He needs to get Aspire up as quickly as possible. He needs to get Far up as quickly as possible, send them out, and then from there he should be able to defend against the Zion Pulsars effectively. And I don't see a Spire coming up yet. I see the Zion Pulsar dealing a lot of damage, and it looks like the actual progen order has been changed. Octos are coming in from the main base. He is not teleporting away the Zion Pulsars to save them. Instead, he is just focused on attacking directly. He's not focusing on this time, though. He might have teleported them away a bit more expertly when he's actually focused. But right now, when, when Torben is... Zion Pulsar is being attacked, is teleporting away, and is trying to tele is teleport more expertly than it had before. That's what I figured it would do. So, Google Frog right now is aware of the second triad, but is not sending anything yet to destroy it. He does have a Shin Turcher now, a Tet Turcher, and two more foundations coming up. And that will be a bit more effective in dealing with this triad. However, he has given Torben some breathing room, which is what Torben needs. He needs to get a Spire, he needs to get units set up, some air units, some Faropods, and Seppi Pods. And from there, he'll be able to possibly get back in this game. He needs some breathing room, and that's what he has. So Torben is in a better spot right now than he was before. While Google Frog is setting up, preparing for a much larger assault, but he hasn't actually sent it yet. That being said, the Zion Pulse have just teleported into Torben's base. Torben will have to deal with some damage to this, but I don't think it's going to be that much damage dealt to him. Just one of the Octos getting attacked heavily, and not a lot beyond that. However, Google Frog has attacked the Triad... 
Second try. Presumably, there has something been done about this, but no! Actually, the Zion Bonus have managed to deal some damage. The Lipstick Spire has been built in the main base, though, so Torben should be able to get some Aryans very quickly. However, there are a Zion Pulsar, or Shin Turcher and Teth Turcher coming in. Zion Pulsars are still dealing a lot of damage to that triad. I think they've destroyed that triad. And it looks like, no, there was ultimately no Spire. I thought I saw the outline of the Spire, the little blue... It shows blue tiles for the area that actually is active in. The Zion Pulsars are taking a lot of damage, are not teleporting away. But... So it looks like Torben will be able to actually take care of these Zion Pulsars before he loses that triad. So he's having to put a lot of effort into defending that triad, and he has still not built the Spire yet. So he doesn't have a lot of QP, so I suppose it, he wouldn't be able to build a lot of area units quickly right now anyway. Sepi Paws would work, far Paws would be tricky. But even Sepi Paws would be enough, honestly. That being said, the Zion Pulsars have been destroyed, Zion Beers are all less left, and Zion Beer actually managed to get rid of that Octo though. He will be targeting the upcoming Octos, and that will be a lot of damage. So it looks like there's been another discontinuity. Ultimately, the Zion Pulsars were fended off. Torben did manage to succeed in keeping his base safe, and... Design Pulsars actually... You know what? No, we didn't even manage to. Google Frog just didn't bother to teleport them in in the first place. Google Frog actually aborted that entire attack, and is now coming in with the Shin Turcher and Teth Turcher, but I don't think they'll be very effective. The... No, never mind, those aren't Seppies, those are just Faros. Yes, they'll be very effective, because those are not Seppies, those are Faros. They aren't super effective against air, they are effective against air, but not super effective, especially not against Bombers. So more Octos coming in, but they won't be able to deal too much damage. I believe those are probably Octos that were set up when the Zion Pulsars were attacking. If they were, that's very tricky, very well done by Google Frog, because that means that Zion Pulsars are actually able to basically faint out the opponent into building units they don't need. Anyway, Dome is being built though, and that will help out effective, very effectively against these forces. Zion Pulsars still teleporting around, trying to deal with the expansions that were built up. And it looks like Google Frog will be dealing quite a bit more damage than it looked like originally. Actually, damaging the main base triad quite heavily. A Spire is being built, and that will be able to finally get some air units for Torbin. Torbin's Dome also helping out dealing with these defenses or these air units coming in. Very good defense, but it may not be useful if Google Frog actually starts building up more forces. He has a lot of money. I think he's probably building up a lot as it is. He's getting Halcyon Blast. I imagine he's probably going to get probably Teth or Zion Halcyon. I'm not sure exactly which, given that it's not certain if he's going for a calm jam strategy for Zion Halcyons. He doesn't. He has a lot of ground units he can fight, but he can get them with Zion Pulsars more effectively. Though Zion Halcyons do provide some, some insurance against air. So, at, from Torben's point of view, having a bit more breathing room again, having defended successfully, building another reef actually next to a second triad, instead of a dome, ultimately, he will be able to, or at least in the future instead of a dome, but he may actually still build a dome ultimately. And from Google Frog's point of view, he's actually re this attack. The dome has been placed differently, and he will be able to actually deal quite a bit of damage to this triad. Yes, he actually is able to destroy the triad, and back in his base, it looks like he's not really doing too much, so he will be able to destroy a third of that triad, and the rest of the triad should follow pretty shortly. Torben is going back to attack and deal with this, but Torben has lost a lot of RPs, he's lost a lot of forces, he's lost one of his... basically lost one of his triads. And now it's being completely finished off. A Spire has been built, though, and some air units are likely to be coming very shortly for Torben, but he hasn't used them up yet, and he's not going to be able to save his base anytime soon if he does. So he does need to get rid of these forces, but he's not able to save his base from what he has. Google probably actually jumping back further, I guess, to double-check that his attack went well, but he pretty much got this attack going near the unplayable past. So Torben's going to have a hard time dealing with this, and will be probably falling behind from this alone. He does have some money, he has some Octo setting up to expand, but he doesn't have air units built up yet, which is very surprising. And here we have a Zion Halcyon getting skip teleport with a couple more Teth Searchers. No specials being upgraded, but Zion Halcyon, Teth Halcyon, that alone will be able to deal with everything that Torben has, no problem. So, I'm a bit surprised that Torben is being allowed to live. I mean, Google Frog, he could easily just skip in those Zion Pulsers back when he is just deal with this entirely. I'm surprised he hasn't done that. But, he decided not to. So, from Torben's point of view, he is able to get a couple of Farpods and a couple of Sippy Pods, which will be somewhat effective in fending off the defenses. The Sippy Pods are patrolling pretty well. The Farpods have gone south to see if there's any expansions being built for Google Frog, and he will find one in the southwest cor or southeast corner of the map. And now attacking it. So, Google Frog's going to lose one of his expansions. However, Google Frog is floating over a thousand in each resource back here. When he is, he's obviously a bit more conscientious about this, but he does have his forces coming in, being teleported in. Not actually attacking yet, though, oddly enough. 
Zion Pulsar has not been teleported back. It looks like he was teleported to the base to repair and has not been teleported into Torben's base to attack. And here we go. Here's the attack coming up. However, the Farpods are completely cloaked that won't be able to be dealt with very effectively without having a Shin Turcher or Shin Beer. Which is not really going to happen. So Shin Turcher. Without the Shin Turcher, the Farpods are going to be able to completely obliterate this attack. While the attack will still be effective, it's not going to be as effective as it could have been. A Shin Turcher or two would seal the deal. And there's a Shin Turcher actually on the east side of the map, but it's not helping out in this main attack. So Torben, back when he is just having patrolling semi-pods, having a second base actually to the west of the map, this is rather effective, so Google Frog will have to deal with now with two bases. So Torben may actually be able to save himself from this, I'm not sure, but it looks like Torben will be able to at least buy himself some time, give himself a chance to get out of this and get more units. Getting chronoporting as well, Torben is halfway through getting chronoporting, so he should be able to start chronoporting some units back to save himself. Not a lot of PP though, so it will be tricky to do it, but he, he's effective with it. If he gets the right stuff, then he will be able to make it work. So when Torben is, he's mostly focused on building this new base, making sure it all works out. Of course, we've seen in the future that it does work out so far, but Google Frog, not totally aware of it, will have to deal with this when he finds out, but he will likely be finding out soon. I'm surprised he... I don't see any scouts out right now. It looks like he has some RPs around. He doesn't have an RP around that particular section of the map. Sebi is taking a lot of damage. However, dealing a lot of damage to Ted Searchers. One of the Ted Searchers is down. The other Ted Searcher is still flying. And the Zion Halcyon is helping out. That should turn the tide. And Aspire has been built, so the base is continuing to be built up. That second base, Ted Halcyon being built. And it looks like a couple Zion Halcyons. Is, no, a couple Ted Halcyons and a Zion Halcyon being built. And a couple of Shin Churchers as well. So, very effective force from Google Frog coming in will be more than enough to deal with what's going on. And as Zion Pulses, I think, Zion Pulses have found one of the RPs, and they have now found the base, or at least I'm pretty sure they found the base. I think they had the vision for it. Just double checking, teleporting around. So, Google Frog likely knows about this base right now, and will be sending some forces to deal with it as leisure. I think he actually has a, he has a foundation on the east side of the map, too. I don't know if he's going to do anything with it, except his repair base. But he does have forces coming in. There we go. The forces are coming into the base. They have found the second base for Torben, which will be destroyed in a hurry because there's really no point in leaving that thing to live. And yes, the foundation has been built, likely as a repair base. The original Zion Halcyon and Ted Turcher are just hanging out there. So Torben, from his point of view, his base has not been destroyed, but he likely sees the flashing red and knows that something has gone wrong. I'm not sure if he's actually set up a defend against it yet. He does have independent bases, though, so he could send back some units front back some units and use that to defend, but I don't see him doing that. He doesn't seem to be actually building anything. He has a couple far pods that he could send back, but it, that wouldn't be enough. That would not be enough against that many Halcyon class units, especially Ted Halcyons. That would destroy nothing. So Torben, rather surprised by this turn of events, has realized exactly how much damage has been dealt. Having to figure out what he can do about it, more foundations being built around the map, so Google Frog has, has basically repair bases around the map. More domes in the main base, but nothing really meaningful being built right now for Torben. Not a lot of resources either. Google Frog's been doing a very good job going around, destroying the RPs, and just stopping Torben from really getting anywhere. Raiding it very well. So Google Frog doing a very good job raiding. Torben didn't manage to defend his stuff well enough. He's, he had a lot of expansions, but not a lot of defense. And a slipgate actually coming up for Google Frog. Oh, I'm sorry, that gate tag was always for Google Frog. My mistake. So, never mind. Torben never had gate tech in the first place. Ignore that last stuff. So yeah, Google Frog had gate tech this entire time, has been teleporting around, no problem, and has a slipgate coming up when he is. I can't believe I made the mistake. Anyway, that was very amateurish of me. I apologize. But what I don't apologize for is for this exciting battle that's coming in from Google Frog, destroying, completely obliterating Torben's base, which should seal the game. I don't think Torben can really get out of this right now. The domes are dealing what they can, but there's just a lot of forces coming in. There's even more forces back up for Google Frog. And of course, there's a lot of a lot of money in Google Frog's bank. He can do whatever he wants right now. He has this game in the bag. So once Google Frog does manage to get a complete teleport in and probably get more units built up as well, he'll be able to just seal this completely. So Torbin doing what he can to try to defend, but mostly trying to escape with his RPs. Getting what he actually dealing some damage with this Farapod in the southeast corner of the map, but not enough to properly deal with this. Forces coming in to deal with this Farapod, just get rid of it in a hurry. And then finish up the main base. And I think Torben will be GGing once he sees the giant force come in. Google Frog 
has complete map control and the ability to chrono port. So there's not so pretty much complete map control and timeline control. So Torbin, I'm not sure what he can do to defend. He has very few resources. He has no income in LC. He could convert to QP from QP to LC, but that won't help him in the long run. He'd need something to defend, something to stop this, and he doesn't even have legal class units. He could do it with enough pod class units, but he needs a lot of forces, a lot of resources to get that many forces, and that's not happening. So right now, Torbin trying to do what he can, escaping with his RPs, trying to send them around the map to take what resources that are around the map, but that won't be super effective. Faropod coming around, trying to harass Google Frog, but Google Frog has so much stockpile that there's no way he's going to lose because of a Faropod destroying his... Honestly, he could lose all of his RPs and he still win. So the RPs for Torbin are being destroyed very quickly. The RPs for Google Frog are being harassed very slightly, and there's even more foundations coming up to repair and to detect and all that on both sides. So Torbin, rather surprised by this, congratulates his opponent and is pretty much is kind of shocked, really, as much damage that he took, how much that Vecchio managed to pull out. Because for those of you not following, Vecchio was actually rather underpowered for a while, but has been buffed up a bit, and Grekum was a bit overpowered for a little while, and it was nerfed a bit, so it was a, lot of balance changes recently. And Torbin wasn't quite used to this, apparently. So that was a bit of an issue. His playstyle didn't quite work out in this new version, but still, that was... That was the game. So Torbin still managed to deal quite a bit of damage, still managed to keep Google Frog on his toes for a little while, but it looks like Torbin didn't manage to actually get around from here. So that was a rather exciting game. Google Frog did a lot of damage, did a lot of harassment, and Torbin did what he could to defend, did a good job defending initially, but unfortunately he did get, from him, he did get overwhelmed. And so Torbin has pretty much surrendered, and he has surrendered, so well done to Google Frog. That is the match between Google Frog and Torbin, so he did a very good job dealing with that, and that was 2-0 for Google Frog, so please stay tuned. We'll be coming back with Dark Vortex versus Shaka, probably in about five minutes or so, so we'll see you then.